ES Core can be run using raw SQL queries and store procedures. Hit the subscribe button as we continue with part 6 of getting started with EF Core. Before we start using raw SQL queries and store procedures, we need to add some NuGet packages. So we go to Tools, NuGet Package Manager, and Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. We're going to do a search for Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore.Relational. We're going to add it to the application project. We're going to select 8.0.1 because that's the version that we've been using for all the other NuGet packages. We also need to add Microsoft.data.sql client. Once again, we add it to roundthecode.efcore.application. We'll get the latest stable release and install it. We're now going to set up a new model to get the product ID and name. So in roundthecode.efcore.application, we go into models, add a new item. We're going to call it get product name. Mark it as public and remove the using statements. Then we go into the get product and we're going to copy and paste the ID and the name property into the get product name model. In order to write some raw SQL query in Entity Framework Core, we're going to set up a new method in the product service. So in the iProduct service, we need to set up an implementation. It's going to be a type of get task with get product name, and we're going to call it get name async, passing in the ID as the parameter. We're going to copy that, and we're going to have to implement it into the product service. So we mark it as public async, and we'll paste in the method. In order to use the raw query, we get our DB context and the product's DB set. From there, we've now got this from SQL raw method that we can use. One of the parameters is to add a SQL query. So we can add select star from shop dot product, where the ID is the parameter of the ID. In order to get this ID parameter, we need to create a new SQL parameter. The parameter name for it is ID, and the value is what we're passing in as part of the parameter in the method. And we're going to get the first record. We'll then do a null check. And if it's null, we return null. Otherwise, we'll get a new instance of our get product name. We'll get the ID and the name. Next, we need to set up a web API endpoint so we can call that query. So in the roundercode.ef core, which is our web API controller, we go into product controller and we're going to set up a new method for our endpoint. So we're going to use a HTTP get type and the root for it is going to be name and the ID parameter being passed in. Mark it as public async. It's a task of I action result. I'm going to call it get name async, passing in the ID as the parameter. So we call our product service and we call get name async, passing in the ID. If the product is null, we'll return a not found response. Otherwise, we return a 200 response, passing in the product as the value. So our new endpoint is set up. Let's try it out. Let's try it with an ID of three. It's getting a response of ID of three and the name of laptop. Let's try it for another one. It's an ID of five and the name of mouse. And let's do one where we can't find a record. It's returning a 404 response. We're now going to execute a store procedure as part of an Entity Framework core query. But first, we need to create a store procedure in our SQL Server database. So in Visual Studio, we go to View and SQL Server Object Explorer. We go into our local DB, go into our database, go down to Programmability, and we right-click on Store Procedure and go to Add New Store Procedures. The procedure name is going to be Get Products Order by Price. We don't need the parameters. We also don't need the return statement. We're going to set no count as on. 
We don't want the number of rows affected to be part of the results. We're now going to write our query. So select star from shop dot product. Order by price ascending. In order to execute that, we right click and go to execute. And that's been created in our database. Now that we've created our store procedure, we can execute it as part of an entity framework core query. To do that, we're going to set up a new method in our product service. So we go into the I product service and set up a new implementation. It's going to be a list of get product name. And we're going to call it get all name order by price async. We'll copy that and we're going to paste it into the product service. So we'll mark it as public async and paste in the method. In order to execute the store procedure, we get our DB context, get the product DB set, and we can call the from SQL method. As it's a formatable string, we need to add a dollar sign before the quotation. And we can call execute and then our store procedure name, which is get products order by price. We then return it as a list asynchronously. We then select each one as a product name, so a get product name. So we get a new instance of the get product name model. And we get the ID from the product.id and the name from the product.name. And then we return a list. We can now execute that store procedure by creating a web API endpoint. So in our web API project, we go into the product controller. I'm going to set up a new endpoint. So it's going to be a HTTP get and the root is going to be name slash order by price. We'll mark it as public async and return a type of task I action result. And we're going to call it get all name order by price async. And simply we return a 200 response and we call our product service and the get all name order by price async method. The method has been set up. Let's try it out and execute it. And all the products are now returning from that store procedure. If you want to watch any video in our Get Started with EF Core course, check out the playlist at roundthecode.com slash EF course. There is also a link for it in the YouTube video description.